Today, we're gonna learn about vacuum forming. In this video, come along as we check out this machine, learn how to vacuum form, find practical and unpractical uses for it, identify some of the thermoformed products we come across on a daily basis, I try my hand at making some actual products, and take a look at some other vacuum forming videos and what others are using their machines for. I will be upfront and say that vacuum forming wasn't even on my radar, especially with how busy my own business has been lately. I have even temporarily closed down my Google and Etsy to try to slow things down a little bit, but I must say things are still moving pretty fast. But VacuQ3D messaged me and asked if I would like to try out one of their machines. And I was eager for the opportunity as it's a whole new set of skills to learn. And boy, do I have lots to learn. The vacuum former was delivered in a wooden crate by one of my normal delivery drivers straight to my front door. Right out of the crate, all you have to do is plug it in, power it on, and you're ready to start vacuum forming. Simply put, you're heating up a piece of material until it's pliable, pulling it down around an object, then pulling a suction to conform it to that shape, popping it out, and then you have your vacuum formed piece of plastic. This is a lot like if you remember the days when we would jump into trash bags, grab a vacuum cleaner, and well, you know the rest. The settings were already set for the type of plastic that was sent with it. This turns on your heater, starts heating up to your desired heat. You can see I can change that there. It's going to 260. I can change my timer there with the arrows. It's really, really simple. Heater off, vacuum on. It's so simple and it's all just ready to go right out of the crate. And this vacuum former has four different heating elements, which seems to give it a nice even distribution of heat along the entire sheet of plastic. So here is my first attempt using the vacuum, the vacuum former. I'm gonna put in a smartwatch, a key, and one of these wooden coasters that I make and sell. It's at 230 degrees. I'm gonna go ahead and lift it up into position. And I'm gonna set my items in here. 20 second, and it looks good. Turn off the heater, turn on the vacuum. That was super cool. Oh, I wish you could have seen what it was doing. I believe before disengaging those, I can lift it up. And it helps to get it unstuck. And then I can take these up. And I should be able to lift it up out of the way. Oh, we came out. <laughs> that is so cool. I'm really excited. Being able to create professional looking packaging with this. That piece of wood was engraved with the laser. And you can see how it sucked in. All those letters, that is really cool that it was able to do that. It's got a good strong suction and I can remove it. Oh, that's, <laughs> that is pretty cool. That has given me a lot of ideas. Since we can change the color of the plastic like that, that really expands the opportunities that you would have with a machine like this. I, uh, I definitely let the plastic get too hot there and it created wrinkles. That's my fault because I was playing with the camera. I think I'm gonna try it again and see if I can keep from overheating it this time. That looked much better than the last one. 
Oh, it couldn't be any better. Everything fell right out. I mean, man, you could literally sell molds just like this to candy makers or people interested in doing things like that. And I was just checking the cost of a sheet like this. If you're ordering it off of Amazon, it comes to about $1.70 per sheet, which is a pretty low cost of goods. All right, this is probably gonna push it way past its limits, but I wanted to try to make a very tall box. This is a box that I made with my laser. I did drill vent holes here on the bottom to help the suction pull it down in, because this is probably three to three and a half inches tall. I'm really impressed with how well it sucked into the box. I did not expect that. You can see these sharp edges here. That's to be expected with an object as tall as this with such sharp corners. So I don't know if you can see how far down into the box it went. I just tore through, so it essentially turned into a saran wrap right there. <laughs> I think it's gonna be stuck. <laughs> Here's another thing you can think about is leaving an item encapsulated in plastic like this. I mean, I could just straight cut it off there and my box is now protected by a film of plastic. Ooh, this is where draft angle would be very helpful. If this box had a slight inward angle to it, it would pull out much easier. <laughs> that is pretty cool though. I mean, it looks kind of like a bathtub for squirrels. And you can get different thickness plastic. I am using a plastic that is 0.5 millimeters thickness. It's transparent PETG. This time I'm gonna do the box upside down. Let's take a look at this. With this technique, it's like a single walled box. Before, it was a double walled box, kind of like a tub. So I don't think we're gonna run into thin spots on this one. Wow. There it is. Oh, oh no way. I essentially just made a lid for this box. Check it out. Made myself a transparent lid. Just the opportunities with a machine like this really just come down to me figuring out what is possible with it. It's a lot like when I got a laser at first, I just didn't know what to do. I knew I wanted to laser everything but the more I work with it, the more I realize what it can be used for. And I could even make a jig, like a box like this, that would make it easy to cut a straight line on this piece of plastic to make it look more professional. One of my kid's food bowls and drilled a hole through the bottom. I didn't realize I was encapsulating it a little bit too much. So the draft angle is absolutely in the wrong direction. <laughs> Yay! Can you see how clear that is? That is how I should have done it. Right there. That's the draft angle we want, guys. Oh, it came right out. I think vacuum forming products are all around us and I think we overlook them and don't even realize it. For example, my Invisalign is vacuum formed. So I just picked up some lunch and wouldn't you know it, vacuum formed lid. Pretty sure that's vacuum formed too. I'm curious to see how these factories are cutting the edges though. I wonder if they have dyes or what it is to get those great cuts. I'm pretty sure these cups are vacuum formed. Definitely the lids. Look at that, P-E-T-E. -E. So similar to the plastic I'm using, I'm using P-E-T-G. I'm telling you, vacuum forming's everywhere. I just braved the crowds over at the old Walmart. So I could go get some chocolate to test out on these molds. It says microwave method, heat wafers in microwave safe container at half power or defrost setting for 30 seconds. Stir thoroughly. If not completely melted, continue to microwave at 15 second intervals. All right. Oh, it is not very flowy. Well, let's give this one a smack. Did you see that magic? I feel like I've seen someone do this before. I don't know. Maybe that'll work. I don't know. I don't know what's going on. We'll put some white right there. Spread it out. 
Go on, get over there. Get into that corner. Go on. Go get in that corner. All right, I think now we'll go put this in the fridge, let it cool down, and see if we can pop them out. 10 minutes later. Ooh, and it looks like they're already separating. I am a little nervous about breaking these because they're pretty thin. We broke the tip off of that guy. Whoa, but check that out. It did get bent. Looks like it went through a bad knife making quench. Okay, I really don't want this one to break. Please don't break. Oh, yes. Come on, Wrenchy. Oh, yeah. Whew. Look at how adorable. I mean, I feel like I just need to do a full set of wrenches. Not bad. I see a lot of potential in this. So I'm scouring the internet for iconic images. So many choices. Oh, well, at least people from my generation and older would recognize the Atari logo. That's perfect. So let's take that and put it into light burn. All right, I've got it in light burn. Turn it into a vector. Hit control U to break it apart. The background and this will be what will be vacuum formed. Half inch thick oak plywood. These will go to the vacuum former. White, opaque, acrylic. is all done. This, this is what we need right here. Ooh, I need those two pieces. And I know a lot of you are probably wondering why is your laser so dirty? And just so you know, this is in a wood shop and I use this laser daily to run my business. I mean, this machine for me, has been quite the money maker. If it wasn't for this CO2 laser here, I don't know where my business would be, but it would not be as successful as it is today. And this thing has been a workhorse and it just keeps on kicking, even with how much abuse I put this thing through. And again, I know this is kind of shameful, but you can see what the machine has to deal with. I do clean it from time to time. I just don't clean it very often. So we need to go get these vacuum formed. There we go. Okay, well, let's just see. Make a bunch of these and they should stick through. Yeah and glue in like that. All right, I'm gonna get the breast cut out and see if we can jam it in there. Oh no, that R definitely has an issue. Right there, that really skinny spot. All right, I think I'm just gonna slit down the middle here. Oh. Oh, that's cool. It kind of self-held itself there. Kind of just went over it. I also don't have the right colors. Yeah, it should be bright red. It's gonna be tough to paint the insides. I should have left them in the sheet form for painting and then cut them out. Ugh. Face palm. I have a lot of learning to do, as you can see. You can get pre-colored plastics, and I think that would be the better fit for this. You can also dye your plastics with dyes and things like that, which I've been seeing some really cool examples of people doing that. Those actually look better than I thought they would. But we should be able to pop all these pieces in the back here. Now, of course, I was making this from someone else. I would do it right. 
We glue it in and all that jazz. I think I'm just gonna tape it in place for now. Okay. Looking pretty good. Let's get those little pieces in there. Okay, let's see if that works. Push it all the way in. Okay. Oh well, that'll do for now. The big reveal. That is sweet. I mean, I gotta say that came out better than I expected. You can see the uh, the wood grain on the letters. So that's interesting. If I was to remake this because this is Atari, you think more like I would probably use MDF as my bucks or sand that wood down nice and smooth so you don't end up with all that wood grain. It's pretty cool. Let's take this outside and get some shots. <laughs> and that's what I get for hanging it by the tape. Okay. That's better. <laughs> That's not better. Dang it. Now, since I am a complete novice with only a few days of experience, let's take a look at what some others are doing with their machines. First, we have Pacific Mold Design. I love what he is doing because he is casting on such a large scale. He's filling up an ABS plastic mold with alumilite urethane, and it only takes three hours for that to harden, even at that much thickness. Then, we get to see his large vacuum forming machine make yet another mold of that piece that he just casted out of urethane. Bill Duran of Punished Props, and he has lots of videos on vacuum forming. It seems to be a tool that he uses a lot in his prop making shop. I highly recommend checking out the work that he is doing. This video he is showing how you can tint your plastic using dyes, but he has much, much more. Alexandre Chappelle shows something I really, really wanted to do, but I ran out of time. He uses his 3D printer to create the forms for his vacuum forming machine. Not only that, but he uses a cool material called Jessamite to cast some spectacular colored home decor items. I also found CCXRC using a VacuQ 3D machine also, and he uses it to create RC car bodies that he then can recreate and fully customize. I am still brainstorming new ways to use this technology. I feel like there is still so much more to be explored. I'm curious as to what ideas do you have for me to use with vacuum forming? Leave a comment to share your ideas. I would love to do a follow-up video strictly focused on practical applications for a machine like this. And if I use your idea, I will give you a shout out in that video. I want to give a huge thank you to my Patreon supporters Dr. Larry Anderson and Woodland Iron, who give me the encouragement I need to step away from my business and share videos like this with you. But for now, that's all.